We like to imagine we're objective observers of the world. Light hits the eyes, sound hits the ear, and our brain simply records what's out there. But neuroscience keeps showing us that this picture is wildly incomplete. Your brain doesn't film, film reality like a camera. It constructs it. It takes scattered sensory data and stitches it into a story that feels seamless. This isn't a side effect or a glitch in the system. It is the system. Your brain predicts, fills gaps, and edits scenes so quickly that you usually never notice. Think about times you were certain you heard someone say a specific phrase, only to find proof later they said something entirely different. Or how a man seems one way at first, but when you revisit it, the words or meaning appear to have shifted. These aren't simple memory lapses. They're live edits that your brain performs as you experience the world. Cognitive scientists like Daniel Kahneman have shown that our minds prioritize speed over accuracy. Predictive coding lets us move through life efficiently but it also means we're constantly hallucinating parts of our experience. For people interested in conscious creation, this is an opportunity. If perception is editable, then the stories you tell yourself about what's possible are also editable. The problem is most people don't realize this editing is happening. They take the brain's output at face value unaware that expectations, beliefs, and prior experiences are shaping every perception. The first step in hacking this process is awareness understanding, that our perception is a construction project that's happening in real time. Once you accept that your brain is constructing reality, the next question becomes, what beliefs is it using? What blueprints is it using? Beliefs, expectations, and emotional states act like zoning laws, deciding which mental buildings go up and which ones get demolished. Psychologists call this confirmation bias, the tendency to notice and remember what fits our existing worldview while ignoring all the data that doesn't. If you're convinced the world is competitive and harsh, you'll see evidence everywhere. Neutral interactions feel threatening to you, opportunities seem scarce. On the other hand, if you cultivate an abundance mindset, you're, most, you're more likely to spot synchronicities and possibilities. This doesn't mean reality itself changes on demand, it means your attention filters the available data. Your nervous system is wired to save energy. So it keeps reinforcing pathways you already use. The cost is blind spots. Whole avenues of opportunity remain invisible because they don't fit your script. Becoming a conscious creator involves debugging this mental code. Ask yourself, what am I not seeing here? Challenge your automatic narratives. If you believe people are unfriendly, look for the exceptions. If you think opportunities are rare, scan deliberately for proof of the opposite. You're not forcing a fake belief here, you're widening your perceptual field so more possibilities can appear. Awareness doesn't instantly rewrite deep programming, but it is the first disruption to a self-sealing loop that otherwise keeps you in the same reality year after year. So far, we've focused on the private construction of reality, but we don't live in isolation. Each of us is running our own internal movie while simultaneously negotiating a, sh negotiating a shared world with over 7 billion other directors. Philosophers call this inner subjectivity the overlap between personal perception and objective agreements. Shared reality matters because your, your individual narrative can't simply bulldoze physical laws or cultural agreements. You stop at the red light because society collectively agreed that red means stop. You can manifest personal confidence, but if you ignore other people's lived experiences, your version of reality collides with theirs. 
Conscious creation without respect for shared perception becomes self-centered and ethically thin. Real power comes from balancing personal agency with social awareness. You can frame your experience in ways that empower you while still acknowledging that other people's frames exist. If you interpret a partner's neutral comment as hostile, you inject conflict into your shared space. If you dismiss systemic barriers because you haven't faced them, you misunderstand collective dynamics. Ethical perception asks you to share your inner world intentionally and engage with the collective one compassionately. That balance is where manifestation meets maturity. Attention is your steering wheel in this process. Where you focus is where your reality consolidates. Quantum physics talks about the observer effect, and while we don't need to overstate it, psychology shows the same principle. What you attend to grows stronger in your experience. This means small, deliberate reframes can cause large cascades. Stuck in traffic? Well, you can focus on frustration or you can decide it's bonus time to listen to an inspiring podcast. A professional setback can be labelled failure or reinterpreted as a lesson that sets up your next move. These aren't complete these aren't um, sorry, empty affirmations, they're cognitive behaviour techniques proven to change perception and mood. You're not just a passive watcher of your life moving, you're actually directing it. This active role doesn't mean you can rewrite every external circumstance overnight, but it does mean you choose the lens. Abundance grows where attention goes. Fear tightens your field, curiosity and gratitude open it. Training your attention is like upgrading from economy to first class perception. Same flight, completely different experience. Practical tools can make these concepts real. One simple exercise is the sensory reset. Spend five minutes focusing on one sense, hearing for example, without labeling or judging. Notice how your brain wants to categorize bird, car, voice. Instead, stay with raw sound. This slows predictive filling and reminds you how much is assumption. Another is spot the gap. During conversations, notice what you're assuming versus what's actually said. Are you filling in motives, predicting responses? Pausing to question those auto completions can disrupt bias in real time. A third is embracing the beginner's mind, borrowed from Zen practice. Approach routine tasks as if they're brand new. Walk your familiar route as though it's the first time. Suddenly, overlooked details pop up. In relationships, treat long-known people as if they're mysterious novels with chapters you've yet to read. Novelty loosens rigid expectations and invites new experiences. These exercises may seem small, but they slowly rewire predictive coding. Over time, you notice more, assume less, and gain flexibility in how you build your reality. When you integrate these practices, something powerful happens. Life becomes richer and more malleable. Colors seem brighter opportunities more visible, relationships warmer. You realize you're not trapped in a fixed feed, you're shaping the algorithm. Victimhood starts to dissolve because you can edit the narrative you live in. And, but there's also an equally important piece. Use this clarity responsibly. As your ability to craft perception grows, so does your impact on shared reality. Choose stories that empower without denying others' truths. Align your creation so they uplift rather than isolate. Again, this isn't about perfection or constant positivity. It's about conscious authorship. You're upgrading the mental operating system. The glitch, that automatic biased perception, 
stops running the show. And instead, you're the architect choosing frameworks that support growth, connection and ethical co-creation. The more deliberately you work with attention and narrative, the more your personal reality aligns with what you most want to experience while contributing positively to the collective space we all share. So as we close, remember your brain is lying. Not maliciously, but efficiently. It edits, predicts, and shortcuts to save energy. These shortcuts can keep you stuck in outdated stories if you never question them. But once you see the construction happening, you can, you can participate. Start small. Catch one assumption today and test it. Direct your attention towards something empowering. Instead of defaulting to fear or limitation, choose a beginner's mind in one ordinary moment. These aren't just mindfulness tricks. They're ways of taking the editor's chair back. Reality won't become perfect overnight, and that's not the goal. The goal is authorship, building a life that feels intentionally crafted rather than unconsciously streamed. And when your personal creation meets the shared world with respect and compassion, you become a more powerful, ethical, and creative force. Your perception isn't a passive recording, it's a living script. Understand it, challenge it, and shape it. Don't ignore the shared stage we all play on, but don't surrender your personal agency either. You can write stories that serve your growth and honour others' experience at the same time. The glitch isn't an enemy, it's a feature waiting for an upgrade. Awareness plus deliberate attention gives you freedom to edit. And over time, you'll notice more choices, more possibility, and more alignment between who you want to be and what you experience. That's the work of a conscious creator. It's not magical control over every event, but skillful, skillful authorship of meaning and focus. And that's more than enough to transform how life feels, how opportunities appear, and how you engage in a world full of other creators. If this talk sparked new ideas or shifted how you see the world, I'd love for you to help it reach more people. Like this video so the message travels further. Share it with someone who's ready to expand their thinking and subs subscribe to stay connected as we explore more ways to shape perception and create with intention. And of course, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever a new conversation drops. Until next time, think differently, dream boldly, and create consciously. I'm a quiet rebel, I don't need a shower.